Hey there, model railroaders. Welcome to Vintage Road and Rail. It's been a while since I've actually shot any footage of uh, me running any trains uh, up here on my old Atlas layout. In fact, it's been a while since I've run any trains on this old Atlas layout, probably at least six weeks. I've uh, been busy with work and a bunch of other stuff, and I think it's kind of started getting me down a little bit because I just haven't really had time for personal stuff. And uh, so my wife finally had enough of it and run me off, said, go up to the train club, run some trains, have some fun. And I figured, well, while I'm up here, I may as well uh, share the experience and record a video. So here I am. So I've picked up some dinner, which I have eaten, and I'm now happy and full. I uh, had a good old Jersey Mike's uh, Italian sub. Really good. If you have one near, the, uh, near where you live and haven't tried them, recommend giving them a try. But uh, while I haven't been doing a lot of model railroading the past few weeks, couple of months, because my job just been busy and a lot of things uh, with the family have been busy, I did have time to upgrade, if you will, some old vintage cars from the likes of Lifelike and Bachman. Uh, I think there's one in there even from, uh, <clears throat> excuse me, from Athern. And these are some billboard cars, or at least most of them are, and they're old school cars. So what I have done, and let's use this Chef Boyardee car for an example, is I have body mounted all the couplers, and I used shims if necessary to make sure that the coupler height is right, and we'll find out if I did a good job of that here in a few minutes when we run a few of these. And as you can see, I've put metal wheels on here, and I went inside and I upgraded these to the NMRA recommended standard. And the reason I say recommended that way is because it's not a hard and fast rule. It's just what they recommend is an ideal weight. <clears throat> Excuse me. I'm sorry, the weather's changed and allergies or whatever kind of getting to me. So I apologize in advance for that. But um, anyway... Um, if you have a good weighted car, they track better, uh, especially when going across uh, switches or turnouts, you know, that sort of thing. Uh, and they also make it to where if you're uniform on your weight, you're not going to have any cars pulling lighter cars off the track and derailing your whole train. And of course, the uh, body mounted couplers, they're much better if you're going to be shoving cars through turnouts and switches. They're less likely to derail. And, of course, the metal wheels sound better. They roll better. Uh, they don't leave any gunk on your track, so that's all a good thing. So I'm going to take a minute, <clears throat> excuse me, and set these cars up on this layout. I'm going to see if I can get away with all 10. I should be able to. Um, I think I had ran close to 20 40-footers, so these 10 50-footers should be just fine. And no train looks right without a caboose, so I did grab one of those. I've got three locomotives in here, only one of them with a caboose match, but oh well, this is going to have to do. I didn't feel like uh, tracking down a couple of cabooses in it. Well, in fact, for one of them, I don't have a L&N caboose. I've got plenty of CSX, but no L&N. So, all right, well, let me shut up for a minute. I'll get everything set up on the track and just make sure everything looks right, and then I will get the tripod and everything set up. And we'll run some trains tonight. How about that? All right. So be right back. So I've got the locomotive and I've got the string of cars here on the layout. And looks like um, I might need to make some adjustments on some of these cars, which is odd because I did them all the same way. And But most of them look to be pretty good. So I'll just need to kind of make a note of that. So what I'm going to do is kind of get a close-up of these going by, and I can review that footage later and see which ones need a little bit of adjustment. And one of the other things I noticed, I did run this locomotive around the layout a little bit, is it was running a bit rough. I think the track needs to be cleaned. Uh, brass track generally needs to be cleaned a good bit more than what you would with, say, nickel silver. And especially if it hasn't been run in a while. And as near as I could tell, no one's used this layout. Uh, and I haven't been up here in a few weeks to run it. And that's assuming that I ran it a week or two before I went out of town. It may have been a couple of months. So anyway, let's back up and hook up to these cars. And... 
All right, we got them. Let's put it in forward, and let's get a nice close-up here so we can get a good shot of these couplers. Yeah, this track is definitely dirty. This would have took off by now, and that's not giving me a good look. And let's see how we do on the, oh man, yeah, we got some dirty track. So we're going to have a rough ride tonight. And we have got plenty of room. We could put a few more cars on here. And I'm already derailing. Oh my good gracious. Look at that. It's about a half hour later since we had our spectacular derailment right here which of all places on the layout is the last place i want derailments because you're just a very short trip to a very long fall on a concrete floor not something i want um so a little bit of troubleshooting uh one of the things as i'd mentioned at the outset of this video i had upgraded all of these cars but one of the things i did not do was make any adjustments to the trip pins now at home they all cleared the uh, little Katie coupler height uh, gauge for lack of better words that I've got uh, coupler height checker set it on the track and you you know push the car up to it and they all lined up pretty good uh, almost spot on uh, even the trip pin but what I didn't think about is the track work on this layout is very imperfect um it's old it's brass track there's a no a, for sure a little dip over there sometimes that if the coupler is just hanging on it'll let go um and i know this crossover and even this crossover but especially this one can be a bit rough so you need to allow a little bit of tolerance for that and i don't think my trip pins did so I've broken it up into two trains because the other issue we found out, or I guess I should say I found out, was the other two locomotives are running fine, but this one was stuttering and all kind of stuff. Um, so it may just need to have a good wheel cleaning. And that's not to say the track doesn't need clean as well, because it absolutely does. But let's see if we can now run some trains. So what we're going to do is we're going to start off this Norfolk Southern. And I did rob another caboose. I got it over here and all the cars that they've got they've got to have 100 200 cars scattered across this layout one caboose and also rob this jack frost i'm not going to run it uh because its couplers are dialed in for that layout and i don't, don't want to touch it but i thought it looked nice just sitting there so let's go ahead and let's get this norfolk southern off the off the main line and then we'll let this lnn have a go and we'll just kind of switch them out so, first thing we're going to need to do is throw this switch right here. And nope, not the one on the other side. There we go. All right, now let's go ahead and bring this train in. We're going to put it on the outside. No, that's what I said I was going to do, wasn't it? I was going to put it on the outside. So we're going to put this on the outside, and then we're going to throw the switches. And then this L and N can pass it on the inside. So let's come on in here. Hopefully I got enough room. Ooh boy. That is going to be tight. I'm definitely glad I went with the outside. Alright, so let's throw this switch. Let's throw that switch and let's cut off the power to number one. Off, I said. All right, so now let's throw switch four and give it some power. Let's come on out. We're going to keep these trains running fairly slow.
All right, let's slow down here. How are we gonna make it? Let's get in here, because we are, we are. <laughs> nope. <laughs> let's manually. No, that ain't happening. That is not happening at all. So we're gonna, we're gonna cheat. And we're gonna hand of God everything. Ah, for crying out loud. One thing I did notice is this coupler here is hanging down a little low. And I think what's causing it is the screw is a little tight and it's making it bend down ever so slightly. All right, let's try this again. And even with that, we're cutting it close. So let's see how we do over here. That, we're good over there. This is my favorite DC locomotive I've got. This is a yellow box Atherin Genesis. It's straight DC. It's not upgradable to uh, DCC in the sense that it's not DCC ready. So you can't just grab a 8 or 9 pin plug and certainly not a 21 pin plug and drop it in there and make it DC, uh, DCC. However, it does have a control board in there, and you can very easily pop that out and just solder you in a uh, board from Soundtracks, Digitracks, whoever. But it's for a DC locomotive, this sucker runs super smooth, super quiet. Really nice, it's my favorite. I'm wishing now I had set up the tripod. I would set this on the tripod and fix the mess I've got over here on this uh, outside line. So let's talk a little bit about these cars that I updated. Uh, every one of these, there's four of them on here. These are all Bachman cars. Uh, these are all from 80s, maybe into the 90s. Two of them come with exclusive sets, I know for sure. Uh, so the one in the lead is just a standard car. It's the Middleton in New Jersey. I just liked it because I love the color of blue. Uh, but the next car is a Chef Boy RD. And it does come with an exclusive set. I think the car could be bought separately from the set. But there was a promotional Chef Boy RD set that you could get that came with that car. Uh, the Old West line, it also appeared in the uh, Tyco, or Tyco, uh, Bachman catalog back in the 80s. But I don't know if it was included with any kind of promotional set. If anybody knows, absolutely let me know. And the last one on there is a Pine Saw. And this one I don't think was sold separately. Uh, and it was part of a promotional Pine Saw train set. And I do have that set. It's over in storage. One of these days I need to get it out and give it a run. This one was purchased separately, so I have two cars. The one in the set, which has never been run. And then this one. Alright, so I'm going to stop the camera in a minute. And I'm going to let this kind of run around, and I'm going to fix the mess I've got on this outside line. And then we can give that uh, train a little bit of action. One more good pass here. So I stopped the uh, LNN 
locomotive right here we're going to go ahead and get it pulled in on that siding so that's going to be number five so we'll throw that and we've already got track power to number four line so let's go right on in nice and slow all right so let's kill the power to four and let's flip number five all right so now we'll give power back to this main line here which is number one and i've already thrown the switches when i fixed this train here we're going to try to hang on to the vlasic uh, but we might cut loose and lose our caboose uh, we'll just have to see but it looks pretty good up front so hopefully we'll hang on right so this is our gp15-1 and this is a walther's train line locomotive and it runs good uh, i bought it new uh, got it on sale when uh, my local train shop was having a 20% uh, off sale so i got it for i think about 60 bucks something like that and i've done a video on it in the past I'll uh, link that at the end of the video. Runs smooth, quiet, and pulls very, very well. So we'll let it go around a couple of times, nice and slow. And then we'll talk about the cars that it's pulling. It's a shame that CSX is not running. And I need to get me one of those Jack Frost cars. So as this goes around, that front car is an Atherin Blue Box kit, uh, and you can tell when you look underneath it, it has the, uh, the metal weight on the bottom there, and I got it used, and it was already fully assembled, and someone painted the weight black, the flat black, which I really like. So this is a Hormel Meats box car. It's one of my favorites. I really just like the look of it. And it would go well with a model power, I believe it was, train set that's a promotional set for Hormel. Had three cars with it. Uh, one was for Spam. Oh, I can't remember what the other two were for. Ironically enough, they were each car was one was red, one was white, and one was blue. It's over in storage for right now. So the second car, that's a Bachman car, and Chessie System is my favorite railroad. Favorite modern railroad is CSX, but the reason I like CSX is that who was Chessie System was folded into. Ever since I was a kid, I love the Chessie System, uh, you know, the Chesapeake in Ohio's mascot, Chessie the Cat. So next up, we have a couple of lifelike cars. The first one is one of their billboard cars. That's Champion Spark Plugs. I love the silver on it. It just kind of stands out. And it's a shame they don't actually run cars that look like this. These billboard advertising type cars. Because I'm sorry, if I'm sitting at a railroad crossing just kind of waiting for a train to go by these would stand out if i went to an auto parts store and needing spark plugs champion just might stick out in my mind because i saw this car now the next car there's no amount of billboards would appeal to me because i just don't like tootsie rolls but this is a lifelike tootsie roll car i love the look of it it's a great looking car uh, and i like the fruit flavored Tootsie Rolls, but I've just never been a fan of the old standard chocolate Tootsie Rolls. But regardless, I still think it's a nice looking car. 
Now this next car, I believe is also lifelike, but I'm not 100% positive. I'd have to look on the bottom, but I thought when I looked it said lifelike. This is Meyer. And for those who are like me and grew up in the South, you may not know what a Meyer store is. Now here in Ohio, we've got them. First time I'd ever seen one was when my wife went to visit her family in Detroit. But they are a lot like a Walmart Supercenter, or at least the ones I've seen. You've got one side sells general goods, uh, everything from toys to, you know, bedding, pots, pans, video games. The other side is a grocery store. Prices are not as good as a Walmart Supercenter, but I kind of like going there a little bit better. I don't come out of a mire in a bad mood like I do at Walmart. Now the final car hanging on the end is another lifelike billboard car, and this is Lassic Pickles. And I do love me some good old dill pickles, I'll tell you that right now. So I would love to see one of these cars riding down the rail. I got a little bit of a complaint about Vlasic though. I love their pickles, but when I look at the uh, jar of pickles and I look at their ingredients list, I was disappointed to see that they have yellow dye number five. Whereas regular Walmart brand pickles actually uses turmeric to color the pickle juice and give it kind of that yellowish greenish type color. I wish more companies would do that. I don't need to be consuming this yellow dye crap all the time. Well, anyway, um, that's a whole lot of me rambling while this train's going around. Uh, but the biggest thing I'd wanted to do is I wanted to come up here and run these cars. I spent several weeks, one car at a time, just kind of working on them, getting them updated. Um, I was doing that when I had a little bit of free time, but you know, learning my new job and everything, and a few other things I had going on around the house. And I got about 10 of them done. Didn't have to do too much for the Hormel car, uh, but it did have to have metal wheels and a little bit of weight. So I wanted to bring these up and give them a run, and it's been a while since I've been up here. And like I said, I may as well shoot a video and share the fun with you guys. All right, Model Railroaders. This video is already drug on to over 10 minutes, probably closer to 15. So I'm going to wrap it up. Uh, but when I shut off the camera, I'm going to just keep running some trains. I wish I'd brought some more stuff. But if you enjoyed uh, watching a couple trains run around this old vintage layout, make sure and hit that like button, subscribe, and hit the notification bell. All right, Model Railroaders. Thanks for joining me today. And until next video... Happy model railroading. Take care.